It's, uh, well, I can't see you, but you can see me. <laughs> I look forward to the day that we get to be together and see each other face to face, but um, I hope you're doing well this morning. I hope that peace is in your homes, in your hearts. Um, you know, we're just excited that this morning we can come together through Facebook and um, worship God together and uh, we are going to be doing communion today together so make sure you get some bread and juice ready so that you can do that with your families. Um, it's going to be a good a good day and God is doing good things. Um, we're really excited. A couple announcements. Um, a reminder that next Sunday is Easter and we are going to gather together in the church parking lot. So I know some of you are thinking, how is this going to work? Well, it's really cool. We bought this awesome little transmitter thing that any, everything that's being done through, from the stage is going to be transmitted through your car radio so you can sit in your cars and hear our service, but we will be able to be together in our parking lot. So please join us next week uh, for our Easter service, 10 o'clock in our church parking lot. Um, we're excited about it. And then also um, join us for prayer on Thursday. We're going to continue to pray. We think that that is definitely the meeting that should not be canceled. Um, so we'll continue just to join on Facebook Live through our prayer meetings. So thanks for those of you who have been showing up. It's been awesome, exciting. Um, and again, we're just excited about what God's doing. So before we start out in worship, can I just read a scripture to you? Yes. All right, good. Oh, not Facebook. I need my Bible. All right. So um, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. So if you want to follow along with me on your phones, um, it's Psalms 24, verse, starting in verse 7. It says, Wake up, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny. Welcome the King of glory, for he is about to come through you. I'm going to stop right there for just a second and remind you, you know, as it says, wake up, you living gateways, and lift your heads, your ageless doors. We are that gateway, and we are those doors that, that God gets to show himself to the world through us. And he's getting ready to do something great. It says, welcome the king of glory, for he is about to come through you. You ask, who is this king of glory? The Lord armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, invincible in every way so wake up you living gateways and rejoice fling wide you ageless doors of destiny he here he comes the king of glory is ready to come in you ask who is this king of glory he is the lord of victory armed and ready for battle the mighty one the invincible commander of heaven hosts yes he is the king of glory and then it ends by saying pause in his presence and I just think, you know, in this time where we've all had to slow down, we've all had to go inside, we've all had to stop from our normal day-to-day -day stuff, and he's saying pause in his presence, that we would take this opportunity that God's giving us. And, you know, I believe that we, the church, are the people, that we are the doorways and we are the gateways for God to do what he wants to do here on this earth. And just like in the time of Daniel, as he was taken and living and serving a king of a pagan world, God anointed Daniel to be stronger, braver, healthier, wiser. And I believe that he's saying the same thing to his church today, that as his people, we're supposed to be wise, we're supposed to be brave, we're supposed to be healthy and strong. And he's anointed us to do just that. So stand up this morning in who you're called to be and who you're, what you're called to do, that we are the doorway, we are the gateway. We're supposed to bring hope, we're supposed to bring life. So I just want to encourage you with that scripture this morning. Um, and you know, and as we worship him this morning, his presence would come, equip us, fill us, and, and do everything that he wants to do through us and in us. And he is, believe me, you guys, he is on the throne. He is victorious. He is coming. And I know that we can get all wrapped up in our minds of the fears and the what ifs and the, the things that are going on. But I'm telling you, do not be afraid. Be courageous. He's on the throne and he is victorious and he is ready to shine and he's going to do it through you. He's going to do it through me. So be available and be ready uh, for him to move through you. Okay. So um, we're going to open up our service and worship. I just want to pray before we start. 
So God, thank you, thank you that you are, you are in control. You are not floundering, you are not afraid. God, you are on your throne and you come in victory for us and on yes. our behalf, Lord. Yes. Thank you, God, that you use us as your doorway and your gateway to enter this world, God. And I pray for the people, Lord, your people, every person that, that bears your name, God, that we would be brave, that we would be strong, that we would be courageous, yes. that we would be wise, that we would be of sound mind, Lord. Yes. So God, I just pray that this morning would be an equipping, an equipping of your people, God, that we would know who we are, we would know who you are, God. And as we come together and we worship you this morning, as we read your word this morning, as we take communion this morning, God, that you would build us up in our yes. faith and in our hope. And God, that you would make your church strong, yes. Lord. Yes. Make your church strong, God. In Jesus' name yes. we pray, amen. 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 All right, well, let's worship the Lord together this morning. <clears throat>
Well, good morning. Um, it truly is who he is. He's a good father. And uh, we are sons and daughters. That's, that's who we are. Um, this morning I'm going to just kind of do communion with everybody. So get your stuff ready. I have a couple things I want to share with you and then we'll walk through it together. So gather your families and your Jews and your elements and um, we'll go forward in, uh, in communion together. Uh, sorry that we lost, uh, I think, Facebook feed. Uh, we lost you there, but um, I think we got back. So if just jump back on there. We'll read you a scripture out of Isaiah. Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus, actually. It's pretty amazing um, how accurate this uh, prophecy is. But then it talks about some things that Jesus went through to the T. And this is one of the really coolest um, scriptures. And I'm going to start in Isaiah 53, um, verse 5, I believe. Talking about Jesus. There was nothing attractive about him. Nothing to cause us to take a second look. Oh, and you know, by the way, I'm reading out of the message version. So if you want, get uh, the message version um, of the Bible and follow along with me. If you don't have that, just listen to what I'm saying. Don't try to follow along in the King James or anything like that or NIV. We're, I'll just read it to you. So there's nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He, looked, he was looked down on and passed over. A man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pains that he carried. Our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us, we thought he brought it on himself that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sins that did that to him. That ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins. He took the punishment that made us whole. Through his bruises, we get to be healed. We're all like sheep who have wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own things, gone our own way. And God has piled all our sins, everything we've ever done wrong, on Him. He was beaten. He was tortured. But He didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and a sheep being sheared, He took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and He was let off. And did anybody really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare. Beaten, bloody for our sins. Sorry, beaten, bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked. Threw him in the grave with the rich man. Even though he'd never hurt a soul. Or said one word that wasn't true. Still, it's what God had in mind all along. To crush him with pain. The plan was to that he give himself as an offering for our sin. So that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and life. And God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of the soul, he'll see that it's worth it. And be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous ones. As he himself carries the burden of our sins. Therefore, I will reward him extravagantly. The best of everything, the, the highest of honors. Because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch. Verse 